ਆਪਾਂ ਆਫਨ ਸੋਚਦੇ ਆਂ ਜੀ ਕਿ ਆਪਣੇ ਏਜੰਟਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਲੈਕ ਆਫ ਆਪਰਚੂਨਿਟੀ ਮਿਲਦੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਨੋਟ ਇਨਕਲੂਡਿਡ ਇਨਫ ਉਹ ਸਪੋਕਸ ਆਰ ਨੋਟ ਡਾਈਵਰਸ ਇਨਫ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਡੋਨਟ ਇਨਕਲੂਡ ਏਜੰਟਸ ਵੈਲ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਗੈਸਟ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਆਂ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਨੋਟ ਓਨਲੀ ਏਜੰਟ ਆ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਆਲਸੋ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਵੀ ਆ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਹੈਡ ਆਫ ਡਾਈਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਨਕਲੂਜ਼ਨ ਐਟ ਦੀ ਐਫ ਆਈ ਸੋ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਬੁਲਾਈਏ ਡਾਉ ਡਾਉ ਜੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਦਾ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਡਾਉ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇਹ ਦੱਸ ਕਿ ਵਾਟ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਡੂ ਔਨ ਟੂ ਐਡਵਰ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਟਲ ਹੈ ਤੇਰਾ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਡੂ ਐਟ ਦੀ ਐਫ ਆਈ ਐਂਡ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਕਿੱਦਾਂ ਜੌਬ ਮਿਲੀ ਐਟ ਦੀ ਐਫ ਆਈ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਡਿਡ ਯੂ ਗੈਟ ਸਿਲੈਕਟਿਡ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਯੋਰ ਜੌਬ ਰੋਲ ਯਾ ਸੋ ਮਾਈ ਜੌਬ ਰੋਲ ਇਜ਼ ਐਸ ਯੂ ਸੈਡ ਹੈਡ ਆਫ ਡਾਈਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਨਕਲੂਜ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮਸ ਐਟ ਦੀ ਐਫ ਆਈ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਲੁੱਕ ਆਫਟਰ ਅ ਨੰਬਰ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਦਾ ਬਿਗ ਸਟ੍ਰੈਟਜਿਕ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮਸ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਅਕਰੋਸ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਫੁੱਟਬਾਲ ਐਮ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਗੋਟ ਬੈਕਗ੍ਰਾਉਂਡ ਇਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਸ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਸਪੈਂਟ ਯੂ ਨੋ 15 ਈਅਰਸ in global transformation working with you know a number of clients across the world and i came into the fa about 3 years ago to head up their program division for the england teams at the okay. time did it for 6 months and really enjoyed it and then kind of went into a temporary role as as a, a lead in the diversity space and it's just grown from there really you know just one after the other so it's a it's an area that you can really make a difference in so it's great fun and that that's why i'm here as your remit it's your job <clears throat> is it your job to help the fa get involved more into the communities is that your role yeah so there's there's an element of my job which is about community engagement of course stakeholder engagement yeah. so i look after some of the uh, diversity initiatives we have across elite football for example across our england squads um some of the grassroots work that we do and that is engaging with some of the local county fa so the the counties are the ones that run grassroots football in every part of the country and there's 50 plus county fa's i will look after some of our anti discrimination activity um that we you know that we have across the FA as well as bespoke programs like faith in football like how does faith interact with football uh as well as asian inclusion so how you get more asians and we we're talking asians across the board so whether you're south asian like you know we are today yep. punjabi pakistani bangladeshi etc but also east asian south east asian, so chinese, chinese japanese yeah, people of that Korean. kind of heritage and it's about trying to get more people engaged with the game and ultimately by getting more people engaged in the game you will see more professionals coming out the other side so what plans does the fa have for the asian community um to get involved in the game we all know that up and love playing football yeah. we have a federation which plays tournaments in the summer you know we've all been there we've all gone to there we have some asian footballers yeah. who have come prominently perhaps not enough which we know and we have a pool of talent which perhaps feels that they can make it in football but perhaps it feels as not being scouted enough not being spotted enough so how is the FA dealing with all of this so we have an asian inclusion strategy which is around developing asians in football nationally okay we launched it in april of 2019 okay but we have been doing work in this space for quite a number of years you can argue that maybe some of the the, the fruits of that labor have been um you know only got to us to a certain point but we have been working in asian inclusion for a number of years it was before my time but we relaunched the um the asian strategy in 2019 so we're about 18 months in now we have specific pillars of that strategy which is about you know community pathways women and girls better engagement in order to tap into the communities because i think one of the things is that many of the community might feel that football's not for them you know right. you see lack of asians in the game yeah. and therefore you instantly turn off and you think well okay if there's hardly any asians or you know people who look like me in the game parents might not want their children to get involved and it becomes a little bit of a vicious cycle so we're trying to tap into um the communities to ensure that they are giving their children for example the opportunity to go and play because that's where it starts you've got to go in you've got to play grassroots football and if you're good enough you know if the players are good enough they will get through the system and that's where someone like Yan Dander came from who I know you've spoken to yeah that's right started yeah. as a grassroots lad went into an academy and developed his way through and to become a professional on the other side. So if there's less going in at the beginning, there's less coming out the other end. And so what we are one of the things we want to do is to make sure there's more kids playing, girls, people with disabilities, you know, young boys, everybody, and that will lead its way through the professional game. How serious are the FA about overcoming prejudices and conceptions <clears throat> like aksar apa dekhde hain that um a lot of Asians, a lot of minorities feel that you know what we're good enough but we don't get the chances we don't get scouted enough yeah you know and we, a lot of uh, preconceptions are perhaps Asians aren't genetically yeah. they're good enough yeah. or they have to have technique because they haven't got the power and the pace so yeah. 
how serious about the FA about addressing these sort of issues? Very serious. I mean, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be there if we if we were not serious about it. You know, I'm someone who is there from an you know an Asian background, Sikh Punjabi background, and I'm there in the system because I believe we're you know they're trying to do the right thing. I wouldn't be there otherwise. So deadly serious. Um, I, I think there's there's plenty of things that we can do, and you know some of the the programs that we got in place are an opportunity for us to keep developing it. Um, yeah, so we take it very very seriously. It's one that we need to get better at. Um, but, you know, there are people like me there who are going to make a difference, um, you know, because we wouldn't be there otherwise. And what about the FA in recruitment wise and, and finding out about the staff yeah. and the diversity in itself? Yeah. When we think of the FA historically and the board members, we just think about 10, 12 when they're sitting around a table, and mm -hmm. they're white historically. They might not even be involved in the game. They might be CEOs from company, often different other lives of business. That is the image that not only we get, yeah. but also the British public also mm -hmm. have the same image of that. So, you know, I mean, I mean, how how true is that? And how much is the FA changed from that? Or how not true is that? I think it's changed massively. I think there is a there is a perception, like you said, you know, yeah. there's a view that it's, it's very well, you know, white dominated. And let's not forget, this is a 150-year-old institution, right? Yeah. So it came from the time when it was white dominated. Yeah, you know, it was domin dominated that way. If you look at the diversity of the FA now, it is very diverse in terms of an organisation. We have strict targets on where we're trying to get to in terms of our own staff. We have a principle called the Rooney Rule, which is about um, for for every kind of role we have in the technical division, which is England teams. So yeah. if you're a coach, physio, uh, you know, a back office operation staff coordinator for the England team or something like that there's a rule that dictates that you have you know people that apply if you are from a, a diverse background underrepresented which is you know traditionally historically yeah. underrepresented that you get through the recruitment process if you've got the right skills and experience it is still based on merit but we we have things in place that are designed to increase diversity it's designed to address the underbalance and so you know those are kind of things that demonstrate that we as an organization are trying to represent the society that we serve. And the society that we serve is everybody. It's the 30 million, play, uh, 30 million spectators. It's the 100,000 grassroots teams. It's the 12, 13 million participants. You know, that is now modern Britain, modern England, that is so diverse that we have to ensure that we as an organization are representative of, of society as well. So absolutely, that you know, it's changing. Dow, you're a clear representative of our community, yeah. of someone who's in a position to make a change in the FA. Yeah. We over the years we haven't seen people like you in that position, you know? even now that maybe a couple of you, maybe three or four of you in yeah. that position in maybe an organization of what thousands and you know, of hundreds. Yeah, so will does the FA also looking to recruit people into positions like yours? Yes. And, and, and are they looking for that? And are they going out into the communities? And have they told you in your remit to look? Dal, you know, we've got to be a bit more diverse in that respect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, that's what the Rooney Rule was there for in the England squads. But also, you know, we're, we're committed to diversity. So every application process will reference the fact that we're committed to diversity. Um, we've even launched the Football Diversity Code in the last six to seven months, which is actually not just about our organisation. It's about, you know, trying to change the leadership cultures of clubs um, in terms of, you know, getting clubs to think about diversity in a different way and you know using specific targets to help them get there you know because if you've got a target to work to and you're going to be measured against it then you might do things differently and that's what the football leadership diversity code does um now, for football now isn't this like a vicious circle it's like um <clears throat> the, the asian kids see we haven't got any representative so and it's like the fa are saying well the asian community aren't coming forward yeah Anna, because they don't want to send their kids isn't it like a vicious circle and how are we how are we going to break this um, yeah, you could argue that. I mean, if you look back, you know, when I was in my, um, when I was younger, in the 90s, growing up, playing football, I was captain of my school. I got joined a Sunday league team. Yeah. My dad didn't have a clue. Again, that, you know, he's like, what does that mean? Yeah. Football, you know, do this, do yeah. that. And I, I said, okay, fine. So and you did. There, and you became a professional. Right? <laughs> so. Well, you know, I, yeah, <laughs> be, be, became a professional. But yeah. I wanted to become a footballer. That right. was my dream at the time. But the parents didn't quite understand. And I think now, we're three, four generations in, you know, my children, for example, it's not the same experience as our parents. And so that kind of secularization of the of the Asian community means that we're actually more clued up and we can bring our children into the game. So the stereotypes are being broken. 
you know, I think Jan Dunder's a good example. Danny Bath is Danny a, good Bath is a good example. Um, you know, there's females. There's there's Rosie Kamita Anwar out there. Udin is another Anwar one. Udin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's Simran Jamat, who is you know Punjabi Sikh girl who plays in the championship. So there are Asian players coming through. There's probably not enough of them, in all honesty. There needs not, to be not more. Not in representation to, or not compared to the population. There, yeah. there isn't enough, Hannah. Huh? Yeah, but I think it, it takes time. You know, I think I think where we are as an Asian community, and I'm talking generalization in terms of wider Asian community. We are probably now where the black community was about 25, 30 years ago. Right. You know, it's normal now to be a player from a black African heritage, uh, black African Caribbean heritage. Maybe it's not quite as normal to see Asian players. And that's the kind of thing that we need to break. That's the, that's the, you know, the, the kind of feeling that when you see an Asian player on the pitch, it's normal. That, that's where we've got to get to. Now, what's your message for kids out there who want to get into football, but their parents are a bit hesitant. Yeah. I mean, what, are your, what is your message? Because perhaps a lot of, it happened to a lot of parents. There are many great footballers out there in our community. You know, we, I know, I've seen them at tournaments. You've seen them on a Sunday. You've played with a few, Anna, who are, who are really good. You Like you said, you were good you know, at football and you were playing football. What's yeah. your message to the parents and to the kids? Now? I, think, I think to parents, you know, the message is that you, you must, must give your children the chance to follow their passions. Whether it's sport, whether it's the arts, music, you know, whatever it might be, I think traditionally, as because we're economic migrants and we have a very strong work ethic, we've come from a world where everyone has to be a doctor or an accountant or a lawyer, right? You're a lawyer. I'm you know, a lawyer, that's right. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And I think Wait, we need, we need look to... look at me, I wanted to be a singer. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, fair enough. Yeah. And we, we, we need to be able to normalise the fact it's okay to do other things. Yeah. It's okay to follow other you know, traditions and, and follow a different career path. So for parents, I would say, let your children test the waters like get them into a football team look for a grassroots team you know get them training in their schools get them involved because you know if they've picked up the talent then they could they could go all the way through it's it's difficult you know and to children you know i would say follow your passions 100 percent. if you want to be a footballer you know like i tell my daughter i want her to be a footballer she's you know eight years old but i want her to be a footballer so how, how is she going to get that influence she's going to get the influence from seeing me yeah pushing her into that, you know, into that kind of space. Whether she makes it or not is a different story. But we've got to enable the kids to follow their passions as well, not, not kind of pigeonhole them into the traditions and, and the vocations that we think are the right ones. Dal, thank you very much thank for you. coming on. We're proud of you as a community thank for you. where you are and for visually representing us as well and for also helping out the community. I hope your role really works out and I really hope that you manage to get people from the Asian community to get them into the game and get them at a level where we can be proud of them as well. So, I hope so. I so, hope so. Thank you very thank much. You. So, AGC Sade Dal Daroch, Jo Sade Sige, FA Devolo, Head of Diversity and Inclusion. Honji Apa Jarea interview the Vetcher, a unusual sport, Jo Apa Sare, Baba de Vetcher, Bara de Vetcher, Kail de Hagea, but Apa Kadi Sochenik Apa professionally Kailia. So, Ole Varevi Apa Kalkar de Aji. पर पहला अमल दिया क्लिप तो बात